Well, welcome back. March is Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month, and 135,000 Americans will be diagnosed this year. And joining us now is a special guest on this very topic, Dr. Justin Makel. He's the chief of the Division of Colon and Rectal Surgery at UMass Memorial in Worcester. Thank you so much for, for coming in to talk to us about a very important topic. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So much of battling cancer is early detection. And uh, we learned, in fact, today that Dr. Oz, a well-known doctor, uh, went in for his first colonoscopy at 50, and they discovered polyps. They were able to remove them. He said that saved his life, having that early screening. What's the importance of catching it early? Well, as you mentioned, about 150,000 people in the United States will be diagnosed with colorectal cancer each year. Mm. And that's a pretty significant number. Mm. And uh, at the same time, we're fortunate because we have the ability to prevent the vast majority of those, um, those diagnoses. And mainly we use screening modality of colonoscopy. Now, there are several different options available with regards to how to prevent colon colorectal cancer. But colonoscopy is really the best option with regards to the fact that we can actually go in and we can identify precancerous polyps and remove them so they never have an opportunity to grow into a cancer over mm. time. And everybody knows that as soon as you turn 50, your doctor is going to start talking to you about setting up a colonoscopy, but you're beginning to see disturbing numbers among younger people mm. in terms of an uptick in colorectal cancer. What is happening? So about 1 in 10 of the patients that we see now is actually under age 50. 50, which means they're being diagnosed before the screening age of 50. Wow. And so I think it's very important that people recognize what the risk factors are, specifically a family history of colorectal cancer. So, for example, if you have a first degree relative, like a parent or a sibling who's been diagnosed, then we want you to come in earlier, so starting at age 40. Mm. And also, if you've developed symptoms related to colorectal cancer, whether it be bleeding or changes in the bowel habits or abdominal pain or weight loss, then you should bring that to the attention of your doctor, and they should therefore recommend that you ha undergo a diagnostic colonoscopy to try and figure out what's going on. Once someone has been diagnosed with colorectal cancer, you say the most common option right now is you do an open surgery. You go in through the abdomen, is that right? So traditionally, when we operate on patients following a diagnosis, it's done through an open 8 to 10 centimeter incision. And we've transitioned over the past decade to doing minimally invasive or laparoscopic surgery. So with a rare exception, the vast majority of our cases are done now laparoscopically, which means we, we insert small instruments through the abdominal wall. We do most of the operation on a television monitor us, utilizing high definition uh, mm -hmm. imaging. And we're able to actually remove the, that segment of the colon utilizing uh, small incisions mm. and obviously that facilitates the recovery process. And actually you've led a team at UMass Memorial where you're pioneering this new procedure. What is it called? How does it work? And you actually brought some of the instruments with you so you can sort of demonstrate how this works. So there's a bit of a difference between colon cancer and rectal cancer, although we, we oftentimes call it colorectal cancer, but the rectal cancers can be a very challenging operation or technically demanding operation in order to remove it safely with clear margins. Because it's so far down? Mm. Because it's down deep in the pelvis and you're working in a very confined space with oftentimes a limited view. And so with some new instruments that are now available, we're now able to offer our patients that operation placing instruments through the gastrointestinal tract and performing what we call an incisionless surgery. Mm. And so, for example, we'll use a, a device like this one, uh, which allows us access to the GI tract, and then instruments like a grasper or a telescope are inserted, inserted through it, and we're actually able to visualize the tumor with direct inline visualization using 4K imaging. Mm -hmm. We're able to define margins around that tumor and preserve the other structures, whether it be other organs or nerves or blood vessels, to the point where we we can actually remove the tumor and oftentimes preserve the sphincter muscles that allow us to avoid having to perform a permanent colostomy bag. I think most people are familiar with the famous case of Katie Couric who had a colonoscopy on the air after she lost her husband at 42 from this disease and that really sent people. Uh, there was an uptick, I believe they called it the Couric effect and mm. more people going to get a colonoscopy but still what you hear from people is they dread it because they don't want to do the drink you have to do that's apparently horrible and then they're worried about the procedure itself. So what's your best pitch to people to say, you know, 
it's not that bad, but it's so important to get this test done. When you finally come in to have the procedure done, it's actually quite easy. We sedate people with propofol now. We insulate with carbon dioxide, which is passed quite easily, so you don't, people don't have the gas cramps that they used to have to recover from afterwards. Mm. And they wake up pretty quickly as well, yeah. and so they get back to their normal activities. It's a very safe test, and remember, the goal is to go in to a patient who's not having any problems. So a lot of people say, why do I need to have a colonoscopy? I'm not having any issues. The goal is to come in when you're not having problems, identify precancerous polyps, remove them so they never have a chance to grow into mm. a cancer over time. Yeah. Get that screening. Dr. Justin Makel of UMass Memorial pioneering this new TATME procedure. Thank you so much for the work you're doing and for coming to talk to us on Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Now we're going to go to Eric to talk about the weather.